If you look at the surge in autoimmune conditions and allergies, they've increased far too rapidly for that to be down to human genetics. Human genetics take a lot longer than that to change. You know, we're talking hundreds of thousands, millions of years usually. Something else has changed. When we look at the microbiome, it's clear that people who are uh, experiencing these types of autoimmune conditions, they tend to have dysbiosis. I think it would be far-fetched to say that a causal relationship has been established for some of these. A lot of this is epidemiology and it's an association, but there are mechanisms that do make sense. And so the idea is that if you have dysbiosis and you have less of these short-chain fatty acids being produced. And just to be clear, dysbiosis being a dysregulation of your gut health in general. Yeah. So you've lost that diversity Mm -hmm. and you get a a relative reduction in the healthful microbes and you get an increase in the pathogenic inflammatory microbes. And when this happens, you get breakdown of that mucosal layer, you get separation of the endothelial cells. So the endothelial cells are held together by tight junctions and butyrate, that short chain fatty acid that I mentioned, one of the functions that that it has in the gut is to help keep those tight junctions in good health. As you get this more inflammatory state in the gut and dysbiosis, you get breakdown of that layer. This is important because it allows the flow of molecules from the gut into the bloodstream that otherwise that shouldn't be getting through the gut lining. Mm -hmm. And these, these are often referred to as bacterial endotoxins. They essentially travel into the bloodstream where they rev up the immune system. When you're driving up inflammation, you're increasing oxidative stress through the body and uh, oxidative stress leads to DNA damage. And then you're starting to accelerate the aging process of tissues. 